Hi. Hello, Twitch. How are you? Today we're learning about flat earthers. I, can I just say, I like kind of picked this out of nowhere. I told you all I would do Princess Diana. And I, I really, when I, when I said that, I truly meant that. You know what I mean? Like when I said that, I was like, yeah, I meant that. Like I really wanted to. And then I was like doing nothing for so many days. You know, and the time passed between like Christmas and New Year's where you just do nothing. You just do nothing and your brain does nothing. I was doing that and every time I tried to make Princess Diana slides, I was like, I literally can't handle this. Like there was just so much information about her that I was like, I, like, oh, I can't do it. And then I was like, you know what? Let me do flat earthers because what's going on there? And that feels like, like Princess Diana, I need to like be respectful. So I need to like actually know what I'm talking about. With the flat earth movement, they're so unserious. I feel like we can just, I found a bunch of crazy shit they've done and we're going to talk about it. And I, so I kind of picked this out of laziness, but then when I finished the slides yesterday, I was like, this eats like these people are crazy and there's so much lore. There's so, so, so much lore in the flat earther movement that I ended up like going really hard on research, which I always end up doing. But yeah, it's crazy. These people are insane. I love it. So if you if you clicked on this video because you're a flat earther, what I want to tell you is that I you can stay here. Like I am not going to judge you. Like you you may believe the earth is flat. It's unfortunately not. It is not and unfortunately you are on, you are not correct about that. It is not flat um according to everything. But like I see how we got there. Do you know what I mean? Like, I see how we ended up there. And Teacher Mel's Classroom, I think you should come to Twitch because this week is really good and we're going to watch a lot of videos. And I have diagrams. I have the flat earth diagrams from the 1840s. I'm not fucking around, okay? I have the flat earth diagrams from the 1840s. My friend Mickey, she's here too, told me about you. You helped my brain calm down from teaching second grade. Oh my god. So before we even get into flat earth, do y'all like that I like just talk about nothing for the first 10 minutes or would you prefer I just get straight into it? I feel like with the YouTube, they're like, shut the fuck up, get to it. But anyway, we came back from Christmas to break today. Oh, I was teaching today. You know where you're teaching and you're like, oh, this is, yeah, man. Yeah, that was today for me. That was today for me. Like, I was teaching those kids and I was like, I'm teaching you, I'm teaching you. And I feel like it was like exactly what I needed. So let me just like tell you my business right now. And hold on, I wanna re rearrange something on here. Okay, so let me just tell you my business right now. Um, I teach three classes. My school is on a block schedule. So normally a class is only one semester. You only take one, like they're one semester chunks. You go to that class every day for an hour and a half. Um, Anyway, sorry, I keep getting distracted from my own thoughts. You go to that class an hour and a half every single day. It's a one semester class. If it's an AP class, you take it both semesters because it's like the material is harder and you have the AP exam in May. So you take it both semesters. So for two of my classes, those kids just like mixed with each other. Like my first and second period are my AP classes and just like kids switched in between them, which was like very last minute happened and kind of I was like oh my god let me make a new seating chart it was like very last minute that I realized this not last minute it happened last minute that I realized and today I was like oh I really like these new dynamics like I really am liking the switch up like I think it's just good for everybody and like it was just like exactly what we needed I'm also happy because before I had one really big class and one small class and they're like a little more even now slightly more even but yeah so that was cool we got a little switcheroo moment and then for my regular education class, I got a new group of kids and I, I'm doing things very differently this semester. Um, it's like new year, new me. We're going to try new things. We're going to do new things. Like literally the way I'm approaching, the way I'm teaching that right now, I've never done before. And I today I was like, oh, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. I like this. Um, the phone system, we will see because this is a new group of kids and today was the first day I was with them. So I didn't do it today because I explained it to them because I don't like to do things like in like a gotcha way so I was like so tomorrow when you come in you put it in here and then I'll give you your little paper great and I kind of like got them I got them hype to get the paper because I was like it's like a blank U.S. map and whoever fills in the most will get 150 and if anyone does it perfect and multiple people do it you'll get 150 so they're like 
you know, because imagine starting a class with 150. Like, that would feel really good. You know what I mean? Um, loving the teacher content, even though I'm not a teacher. Here, TikTok to Twitch to Pipeline Complete. Oh, my God. I love the teacher she's made. I'm glad you do. I'm glad you do. Love your mindset of trying new things. Because that's one thing. Y'all will not break me. Y'all will not break me. I'm just going to keep doing new things and having the time of my life doing it. Having the time of my life. Okay, y'all cheated on this? Great. Opportunity for me to try something new. Let's do this all day. I think that's the attitude and mindset you really have to have. Um, how do you deal with Apple Watches? Not a ton of them. It hasn't been a huge problem for me. Maybe I'm just not noticing. But not that many of them have been that I've seen. Um, my ed major brain eats up your teaching mentality. I don't have an ed major, so tough situation. It's like the Mary Poppins bag. I'll never stop. I'll never stop trying new things. Um, what's your TPT name? It's in my link tree. So it's it's linked directly in there. I think it's Mr. Redacted. Um, oh my God, the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City finale. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. So the motherfucking Peacock app. I couldn't watch it last night because they don't release it till the next day. So I muted on Twitter. I muted like everything. I muted every single one of their names, Real Housewives, Salt Lake City, the acronyms, uh, the misspelling of the acronyms. Like I muted everything you could mute. Also, I'm not going to spoil it for you. If you are watching this and you haven't watched it, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I muted everything you could possibly mute so that I wouldn't see spoilers. And then I watched it this morning while I worked out. And let me tell you, I was on the Peloton. My jaw was on the floor. That is better than any other piece of media that's ever been created. Put the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City season four finale next to The Godfather. Tell me which one you're more engaged with. Tell me which one you're watching harder, okay? Tell me. Tell me. Have you ever thought about switching careers? <laughs> you must be new here. <laughs> um, I love switching careers. I'm so passionate about it. Um, I'm thinking about, I don't want to spoil it. But I did a stream about Jen Shaw. I'm thinking about there might need to be another stream related to this situation. I have COVID and this is cheering me up. I feel like I feel God in this stream with us tonight. Like, you know, from the office, I feel God in this Chili's tonight. I feel God in this stream tonight. For those of you that are on TikTok, I really think you should come to Twitch. We're really having a fun time. I really think it would be good for you to be there. Thanks. So let's, now that we've been here for a full eight minutes... Um, let's talk about the flat earth people. There's a lot to talk about. So I just want to say that at first I was like, let me go into like, before we knew the earth was round, like what did people think? And I was going to go into that and then I was reading it and it was so fucking boring. It was so boring. I was reading it and I hate ancient history. That's one thing about me. I could never teach world history because if it's not relatable, I quite literally do not care. Like, if I can't, like, picture myself being there and observing it, like, if it's, like, too far from my reality of space and time, I don't understand it. Um, I left teaching in June, just wanted to know if anyone else wanted to leave, too. I think everyone does a little bit. But anyway, it was so boring. Like, I was reading about, like, the first maps they drew, and I was like, I'm so bored right now. Like, I don't know any of these people's names. I don't know their experiences, and I'm just not having empathy for them because I don't care. So I was like, let's talk about the modern flat earthers on YouTube, because that's funnier, in my opinion. I'm on here now. I came from TikTok. Real. That is so real. What's your username? Wish you made wish you a minute. I think you just typed random letters, and I'm glad you're here. Love when a call to action is answered. Love that. Period. Everyone in education does want to. <laughs> so... When did we learn the earth was round? Instead of giving you the lore about before, let's just pick up where like science knew the earth was round. So this is people that are lying about the earth being flat. Like we're only going to talk about flat earthers that are existing in the time of us knowing better. We're not going to talk about like ancient peoples that thought the earth was flat because they didn't have the technology. No, we're only going to talk about the modern peoples. <clears throat> but anyway... The spherical nature of Earth, um, the earliest documented mention of this concept, dates around 5th century BC. That's a long time ago. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, 
I tried to take not astrology. I tried to take astronomy in college. I had no idea what was going on the whole time. The only reason I passed is because I was failing all the tests and the professor was like, if you go to this field in the middle of the night when this star thing is going to happen and you like take pictures and take notes and stuff, I'll give you a ton of extra credit. And it was literally at like four in the morning. And I did that shit. You don't have to tell me twice. You do not have to tell me twice. And he was shocked. I sent him the pictures and he, he had, they were like, he was like, they have to be time stamped. So we did it on literally Snapchat. And then when me and my friends brought it to him, he was like, are you serious right now? And I was like, yeah, man. You told us to go to the field in the night and take pictures of the stars and take notes and observe them. We had to stay for a while and take notes about their movements. Yeah. I was like, I need the A, sir. Like, (laughs) I'd do it again, too. (laughs) I almost failed astronomy because it was (laughs) at the same time as General Hospital. Real. 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 Let me fucking turn off my notifications. LinkedIn keeps giving me notifications. Not the time. Not the time. Okay, so anyway, back to the flat earthers. See, I told you we're feeling really good tonight. So, in the 3rd century BC, Hellenistic astronomy established the roughly spherical face of the Earth. Um, And then the practical demonstration was achieved by Ferdinand Magellan, and Juan Sebastian Elcano's circumnavigation, circum means around, like circumvent means to like go around something. Circumnavigation, they went around the entire planet, which was in like the early 1500s. So like we have known the earth was round for a very, very long time. We've known that. Absolutely. I love how we're all off our rockers to start this stream quite fitting for the topic. It really is. I just felt like this is what we needed. It's the first week back at work. We're all going through a lot. So the modern flat earthers can all be traced back to this motherfucker right here. Can I just say he has a disturbing aura, right? Like look at his eyes. And it's rare that a picture from the 1840s can like project this much of a disturbance through a screen, but he's doing it. Isn't he? Wow. Rasputin, stop. Oh my God. What picture are you looking at? So for those of you on TikTok, you have to come to Twitch to see my screen and see all the pictures and see all that fabulous stuff. Thank you so much. It is 100% free. I'm a Walmart parking lot on Twitch. The link is in my link tree. Love you so much. I'm over here like it looks like every other photo from the 1800s. I feel like that needs a trigger warning. So the OG flat earther is Samuel Robotham. Robotham? Robotham. How do you say this? Does anyone know how to say this? Is this anyone's like name or something? Um, Samuel Robotham. Samuel Robotham. Robotham. He looks so surprised. I think that's what it is because that's what's freaking me out because it used to take a really long time to take a picture. So why do you look so surprised? Why do you look so surprised? Because like, Robotum. Oh, Robotum. I shouldn't have been pronouncing the H. Robotum. Thank you. Robotum. That makes so much more sense. Wow. Um, He had a pamphlet. Couldn't even write a whole book. It was a literal pamphlet uh, called Zetiac astronomy and he said y'all earth's flat they lying to us they are lying to us so slight sidetrack for his origin story i promise you'll be into it so he started out as an organizer for the owenit community at the mania and the fens i literally what so it's an owenit community so a little bit of a sidetrack what does owenit mean Owenism is a utopian socialist philosophy of the 19th century. Social reformer Robert Owen and his followers are known as Owenites. Owenism aimed for radical reform of society and is considered a forerunner of the cooperative movement. So like people forming co-ops, like this is the OG, I think. Well, I mean like the OG would be like hunter-gatherer times, but you get what I'm saying. The OG under capitalism. Um, Where am I? 
The ONET movement undertook several experiments in the establishment of the utopian utopian communities organized and according to communitarian and cooperative principles. One of the best known of these efforts was in New Harmony, Indiana and started in 1825 but got abandoned in 1829. It is also closely associated with the British trade movement, which makes sense because this guy was in England. So, with the spread of the Mechanics Institute movement. So, literally what? I love that modern and relatable to you is the 19th century. Yeah. I... Anything earlier earlier than 1800, I'm like, bored. Boring. 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 And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why right now. I was actually talking to my students about this today. My new ones, I was literally just talking up a storm and they were all just staring at me. And they were like, this woman is insane. But whatever. Because to me, when it's in the 1800s, that's when like some women and people of color in the US at least were starting to learn how to read because like they started to get a little bit more rights in some places. So I like it because you can read things from multiple perspectives and form your own perspective. And it's like written in somewhat similar English to what we have now. Whenever I read really, really old stuff, I feel like either it was translated and it's really biased or it's written in such old English that like I'm illiterate and I don't know what's going on. Or it's like only written by like the government and like they could have lied. Like you, they literally, you could have lied. So that's why like, I really only like 1800s to now. Everything else is just like hard for me to get into. I get it's important and I'm glad people have to learn it and I'm glad that I learned it when I was in school, but I'm just not into it. Joe Miami Realtor sending all the roses, period, period, period. Um. You're so real for this. Sorry. Like, that's what I was telling my students today. They were like, I asked them which unit they were, because today was the first day. I asked them which unit they're most excited about and least excited about. And I was like, I personally am least excited about the first unit. And they were like, because we're starting it tomorrow. I was like, sorry. <laughs> It'll get better later. <clears throat> Where am I? So yeah, he was a part of the Owenist thing. I just felt like that was such a random sidetrack, but I just needed to tell you about it. Um, and after measuring the lack of curvature along drainage ditches in the Bedford levels, this is called the Bedford level experiment. So basically a drainage ditch is exactly what it sounds like. It's like a river, but it's tiny and it like goes between people's houses for like water to flow out. And he went in a drainage ditch and was like, this is straight. Where's the curve of the earth? Checkmate. And then he thought the earth was flat. So that is where he got his idea. It's crazy that this all goes back to him. Like, it's really kind of lost on me. So the Bedford experiments, they happened more than one time. Will this stream make me lose brain cells? No, you will gain brain cells, actually. You will gain them. Um, do your students watch your lives? Hope not. If they are, like, is an hour and a half a day not enough for you all? You, saw, you see me an hour and a half a day. You want more? You want another two hours in the evening? All right, bam. See you tomorrow. Um, so, the Bedford experiments. Let me get my Capri Sun. And let's talk about it. The first one was by, how did we say his name is? Robottom? Robottom, in the summer of 1838. It was the summer of 1838. He waded into the river and used his eight inch telescope above the water to watch a boat with a flag on its mast of three feet above the water slowly row away from him. This loser. Who, like, imagine you walk out and your man is sitting in a drainage ditch with a telescope trying to prove the earth is flat. Get up. Get up. Get up. Um, so. Those two comments are not connected, I promise. Stop. Okay. So he reported that the vessel remained in his view for the full six miles. Had the surface of the water been curved, the mass should have been about 11 feet below his line of sight. So literally he stood in the water and was like, but when the boat drove away, I could see the boat and it didn't go over the hump of the curve of the earth. It would have gone over it if it had been there. <laughs> These are the kind of experiments me and my friends did in the summer of fourth grade. So, 
We'll talk more about these experiments later because he did more of them and then other people went back and did them because they were like, we have to go to the place. So yeah, you don't get it because it's not scientifically accurate. So basically, like, here's the river. His logic is, here's the curve of the earth. If I'm sitting down here, when the boat goes over, I won't be able to see it. But he was like, I can see the boat the whole time. Because, like, you can't feel the curve of the earth like that. It's really big. So that's why it feels flat, but it's not. Right? It literally can't even be explained. There were, like, more in-depth physics explanations, but I felt like I really got the gist of it and y'all would not be interested in looking at like equations. Feel free to come for me if next time you would like me to include the equations, but I was reading them and I was like, I don't think anyone cares about that. <laughs> so immediately he was like, let me get this show on the motherfucking road. Let me go tell these people that the earth is flat. So he was going around telling people, hey guys, I proved it, the earth is flat. And then he was at a lecture in Blackburn and he couldn't explain why the hulls of ships disappeared before their mast when sailing out to sea. So he ran away because basically people were saying like, if the earth is flat, wouldn't the whole thing just go like, but you see it like inch away and you can still see like the top part of it because of the curve of the earth because it's actually at an angle. So you can only see the top part of it because the earth is curved. <laughs> So when it's really far away, you can't see the bottom of it because it's like that to you because of the curve of the earth. And so instead of being like, wait, that literally makes sense, he ran out. He just left. He said, my Uber's here. Goodbye. <laughs> I have nothing more to say on the matter. Bye, 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 bye. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I think the game tonight should be voting on which famous individuals would and would not believe this man in the 1800s and who would probably believe him now? He said, thanks for sharing. I'm going to leave. See you never. So he continued to go on tour because keep in mind, had this happened now, that would have been on Twitter and everyone would have been like clown. But he just like went to a different town where no one had asked that question and like kept going on tour. So he um, as he persisted in filling halls by charging six pence, which I think is like the British sense, but I'm stupid. So I don't know. Um, his quick wittedness and debating skills were honed so much that he could counter every argument with ingenuity, wit and consummate skill. But you have to keep in mind, I don't really think like the intellectuals are going to flat earth debates for six cents. Like I think this was probably working class British people in the mid 1800s, which generally speaking did not have the most opportunity for education. So I highly doubt that anyone was really like coming for him, like actually knowing what they were talking about, which to be fair, I would not be able to come for him like, I don't know physics and I don't know equations. So I couldn't, but like, I don't think anyone else there could, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Every argument except why does the boat disappear over the horizon? <laughs> he said, don't bring that up. That is my trigger. Don't talk about the horizon. Shut up about the horizon. <laughs> he sounds insufferable. Six pence be for real. <laughs> So when he was finally pinned down to a challenge, keep in mind, the first Bedford experiment was in 1838. It's now 1864. How long is that? 16 years, is that right? You've been doing this a while. 16 years is not right. 26 years, right? Quick math is really not going for me right now. That's not the mode my brain was just in. But anyway, he's been doing this for a really, really, really long time. He appeared on Plymouth Hoe at the appointed time. Um, <clears throat> sorry, let me start over. 26 years, yes. Almost 30 years. How was he not bored? We said no to the equation. <laughs> so... When he was finally pinned down to a challenge in Plymouth in 1864 by allegations that he wouldn't agree to a test, he appeared in Plymouth Hoe at the appointed time 
witnessed by Richard Proctor, a writer on astronomy, and proceeded to the beach where a telescope had been set up. His opponents claimed that the only lantern of Eddystone Lighthouse 14 miles out to sea would be visible. In fact, only half the lantern was visible, yet Robottom claimed his opponents were wrong and that it proved the Earth was indeed flat, so that so many Plymouth folk left Ho agreeing that some of the most important conclusions of modern astronomy had been seriously invalidated. Literally, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Because these guys were like this lantern is going to be visible and then it was and he was like only saw half of it though i don't even understand what the lantern has to do with any like i i don't understand this experiment at all so i don't understand how this was the experiment like what <laughs> does it make sense to me how did this many people is that why plymouth rock is so important no um why would the whole lantern be visible if it was I don't understand. I don't understand how this convinced people. The lantern connects back to them losing the American colonies. Gatsby moment with the lantern. I read ahead and I'm concerned. <laughs> Glad to know debates have always been bad. Because I don't even understand what anyone's claiming with the lantern. Like, I don't understand either viewpoint. Something about there's a lantern out there. And somehow this guy came out victorious. <laughs> Don't ask me. So, also around this time when he's on his little flat earther tour, it's symbolist. <laughs> when he's on his little flat earther tour, going all around, he also got married for a second time and had two children. When was he married the first time? Okay. This is a lot. This is a lot. I forgot that this was in there. I should have dug him deeper into this. So he got married for the second time in 1856 and had two children. One of them died in infancy. Don't really know what happened to that lady. Because in 1861, when he was 46, he married a 15-year-old girl. Which I know it's the 1850s, but I just can't get down with that. Like, I'm sorry. It, I don't care that it's 1856. You're disgusting to me. I don't care if that was, like, normal back then. I literally don't care. I'm still judging you. Because your instincts should have told you better. Disgusting. But anyway. Prison. Prison. Um, and he lived with her at the time of the marriage, and they settled in London and had 15 children, but only four of them survived. Literally what? That's a huge age gap for the time, too. That's like... Disgusting. As if being a flat earther wasn't enough. And imagine her. You're 15 years old. You just want to be like... I don't know, what did 15-year-olds do in the 1850s? Reading books, braiding your hair, doing 15-year-old stuff. And you have to marry a 46-year-old flat earther who's on his third marriage? Be for real. Be for real. Be for real. Immediately no. Immediately no. Like, as if having to marry a 46-year-old third marriage is not bad enough. He's also a fucking flat earther. He's a flat. You're telling me right now he's a flat earther. Do you think she knew? Do you think she believed? <gasps> she probably didn't like really have access to school. He brainwashed her into believing flat earth theory. Oh my God. I want a time machine. Stop. The relationship pools have always been in the trenches apparently. This is what modern day Tinder is like. 46-year-old flat earther who's been divorced twice. <laughs> Why did someone say, are we talking about Helen Keller? No, we're not talking about Helen Keller. Oh, my God. And she had to give birth 15 times. He said, you're 15, so you can have 15 kids. Perfect. Nah. Yay. Sorry, we said no equations. Helen Keller stream. We are not doing a Helen Keller stream. Y'all cannot be respectful enough for a Helen Keller stream. And I love y'all because you're disrespectful. But I'm not doing a Helen Keller stream. 
<laughs> Stop talking about Helen Keller being a flat earther. Stop it. <laughs> I would definitely act up. We would not be respectful. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god, we're here for 30 minutes. We're only on slide 8 of 56. We have so much more to talk about. I need to like actually rapidly get it together. <clears throat> so, he is also... <laughs> I feel like I'm on next. What's more about this man? He's also named in numerous cases of wrongful death, including death by misadventure for accidentally poisoning one of his own children... And he was named responsible for other deaths using his quack cures of phosphorus. He's also allegedly to be using the name Dr. Samuel Berthy. <laughs> Misadventure is a 1850s ass way to die. <laughs> he died of misadventure? Your dad poisoning you as misadventure? What, did he have to go to the hospital and be like, we were having an adventure. I don't know. It just, like, got crazy. I don't know what to tell you. It was a misadventure. You know, a classic case of misadventure. Like, <gasps> Who is this man? I'm terrified of him. So he was also using the name Dr. Samuel Burley, living in a beautiful 12-roomed house, selling secrets for prolonging human life and curing every disease imaginable. He patented a number of inventions. He is not known to have any medical degrees. Um, and his professions listed at different times were chemist, physician, journalist, soap boiler. What? <laughs> Every disease, soap boiler. I'm a physician. I'm a soap boiler. Um... I have a podcast. Like, that's what people sound like to me. He's on Soap Talk. George Santos ass recipe. You could be anything back then, including a murderer. Including a murderer. This man did too much and he did all of it's wrong. Does he live with Jack Taylor? <laughs> Those of you on TikTok that are so lost to come to Twitch, that's where the chat is like, incredible. <laughs> Did you see the tweet that I retweeted today about Jax Taylor? Please go look at it. I, we don't have time right now. Like, we so don't have time. But go look at it. <clears throat> okay. His book, Zectic Astronomy, The Earth, Not a Globe. So he started with the pamphlet and now he wrote the book, Okay appeared in 1864. His lectures continued and concerned citizens addressed letters to Astronomer Royal seeking rebuttals for his claims. A correspondent to the Leeds Times observed that one thing he did demonstrate is that scientific dabblers unused to a platform of advocacy are unable to cope with a man, a charlatan, if you will. So what the fuck does that quote mean? He basically means that like, He's a good debater and he has charisma, so that's why people believe him. And then, like, when scientists debate him, scientists are used to, like, reading books and, like, being respected. So when they, someone's literally lying to them, they, like, don't know what to do because they're, like, normal and rational. So they, like, don't respond well to that because they've, like, they're not being, like, they're, he's just, like, a charismatic person that's good at shutting them down. And if you're not, like, I feel like in a job, like, sales where you have to be very, like, you just, like, don't really have that muscle, and it's really hard. He could be a cult leader. He really could. Me seeing that all of this can be traced back to one persuasive narcissistic man. Because of course it can. Because of course it can. So here are some of his uh, various maps and things that I told you I had. These, what's the word? Diagram. Y'all have to come over to Twitch. You're missing out. Thank you. So... Here's his map of the world where he shows the sun's path above it from the Earth, not a globe. 1873 edition. He did come out with more than one edition. So this is the sun right here. I guess the sun moves around like this. So the sun circles over the moon or not over the moon, over the Earth because the Earth is flat. Here's land. That's where we are, apparently. And then here's the ocean. Big giant ocean. And so he's saying, they said they went around the earth, but they just, they just went, they just went like that. They went around like that. 
And then the south ice goes all the way around. No merch idea over flat earth. <laughs> this would make a cute rug. It kind of would. It really kind of would. Stop. Should I hang this as a print in my house? I have a perfect spot for it. I actually might do that. That'd be so funny to explain to people. Okay, so here is another one of his little graphs about his experiments. So this is what I was saying. How he's like, look, I can see it, so it's flat. But if it was curved, I couldn't see it. That's his whole thing. The edge of the earth had fringe, never knew. So here's a visual of that experiment we discussed. Here's another one of the Bedford. Literally, he's being like, look, these two views as seen by the means of inverting telescope are exact representation of the sketches taken by Mr. Hamden's referee. We'll learn more about this experiment later. Well, that's my opinion. <laughs> okay, fair. Is the flat earth double-sided? Great question. No, not according to them. There's nothing down there. Referee, we'll get into the referee incident. Speaking of the referee, let's do it. So more on the Bedford experiments. Bo Robottom repeated his experiments several times and no one really cared. And then in 1870, one of his supporters, John Hamden, John Hamden offered a bet that he, by repeating Robottom's experiments, he could show the earth was flat. He was like, anybody want to take this bet? I'm going to prove the earth is flat. Y'all got me. So they were going to set a sight line 13 feet above the water and thereby reduce the effects of atmospheric refraction. See, this is what I mean. Like some of the science stuff, I was like, I literally don't know and I don't care. And then to add a pole in the middle that could be used to see a bump caused by the curvature of the earth between the two endpoints. So they're basically saying we're going to like have a telescope and put two poles. One of the poles should be higher than the other one because of the curve in the earth. But again, it has to be really far apart or it is not noticeable because the earth is very big. I literally have not taken a science class since I was 14 years old, and I know that. I have the, I have an eighth grade science education, and I know that. That's disturbing. With only 13 feet, literally, like that's, you could have a conversation from 13 feet away. So, a naturalist and qualified surveyor, surveyors like measure land and shit, his name is Alfred Russell Wallace. He accepted the bet because he was like, yeah, the earth isn't fucking flat. This is an easy bet. Let me just take this and like be about my money was his plan. So Hamden initially refused to accept the demonstration. So Wallace was awarded the bet by the referee. That, that's why the little graph said the referee. The referee drew it and was like, this is what happened. And Hamden was like, I don't accept that. So the referee was like, Wallace, you win, I guess, because he's not accepting it. Um, the referee was a John Henry Walsh. So Hamden subsequently published a pamphlet alleging that Wallace had cheated. So Hamden was like, this man, Wallace, he cheated. That experiment was bullshit. And he sued him. He was like, let me get my money back because whatever. So he sued him. There was several court cases that went on about this with the result that Hamden was imprisoned because he threatened to kill Wallace. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that insane? I told you all this was surprisingly petty. He tried to kill him. Where did all the bet referees go? I think once it went to court, the referees were like, we're not dealing with this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Not touching that with a 10 foot pole. Sharp left turn. Sharp. So he was put in prison, one, for threatening to kill Wallace, and two, for a published false statement, libel, which is just, like, defamation, basically. Y'all need to go back to school. Stop threatening people you made a bet with over flat earth, 13-foot pole. <laughs> Did he try to kill him using misadventure? They went past the horizon where they couldn't be seen. Oh my God. The same court ruled that the wager had been invalidated because Hamden retracted the bet and required that Wallace return the money to Hamden. So uh, the court was like, you do. <laughs> the court was like, I know he tried to kill you, but he did say 
take backsies, so you do gotta give it back, dude. I was I don't make the rules. I'm sorry, I don't make the law, I just enforce it. You gotta give him the money back even though he tried to kill you, dude. So sorry. Um so Wallace did not know about Robottom. Wallace did not know all the lore that you and I know. So he thought he was just making a bet with like some rando. He didn't realize that he was like going back to all this history, going all the way back to Robottom, which had been doing this for like 25 years. So then all of Wallace's scientific colleagues were like, you fucking lame-o. Why did you make a bet with this loser? That was so unprofessional. You're making us look so bad. Why would you do that? Like, that's so embarrassing. Like, he threatened to kill you. You had to give the money back. And you destroyed your career. Stop. Very embarrassing. You don't come back from that, in my opinion. Then in... 1901, Henry Ewell Oldman, a reader in geography at King's College, reproduced Wallace's results using three poles at fixed height above the water level and then viewed it through a thedio light. The, midi the middle pole was about six feet higher than the poles at the ends, and this aversion was taught in England and is still a part of the curriculum today. So... They did repeat it in like a real way where they were mad far apart and did prove that the earth is curved. I wish the earth was flat because I could jump off. That's so embarrassing. So advocates of flat earth were not deterred. They said, you redid our experiment and proved it. Well, we're going to keep going. Shut up. Don't bring that up. So in May, oh, what did I just drop? Um, in where was I? In May 1904, Lady Elizabeth Ann Blount, who was later influential in forming the Flat Earth Society, she hired a commercial photographer to use a telephoto lens to take a picture from Wellney of a large white sheet she had placed at the bottom edge near the surface of a river um, at Robottom's original position. I don't know why they keep going back to this spot. Like, it's a magic spot. Like, if his theory is true that the earth is flat, shouldn't you be able to recreate this with any body of water? Why does it have to be right there? You know? Um, the photographer mounted his camera above the water to obtain the picture of the target, which he believed should have been visible to him, given the low mounting point of the camera. So she published the pictures far and wide. Whatever, man. So she had a large white sheet. It should have curved. It's a camera in the 1800s. They're not that reliable. I don't know what you thought she was proving. So these controversies became a regular feature in the English. Oh my God, is it skipping for everyone? I hope it's fine. What's going on? Okay, it didn't give me a notification. Cool, okay. Nice, thank God. So these became a regular feature in this magazine in 1904-05, which published her photos and reported two experiments that showed opposite results. Um, so yeah, basically she was wrong, but some people believed her. So she became important in this movement, I guess. Here's her photo. What does this prove? What are we looking at? Literally, this is the worst photo I've seen in my life. What are we looking at? No, right, I see it. <laughs> she would be an Instagram baddie day. You could tell me this was a ghost. I feel like I'm going insane. <laughs> no shot, that's the photo. Like, where's the red circle around ghosts? Where's the sheet? That's what they're saying. They're like, you can't see the sheet. And you should have been able to. Because apparently the small dots, what small dots? These? I don't know. Like, what is, what are we looking at? You said it's her photo and I thought it was going to be a pic of her. <laughs> so, let's discuss this lady. Let's discuss Lady Elizabeth Ann Blount. Who is she? She is kind of an Instagram baddie. Not even going to lie. Um, She was born in Lambeth. I think it's in England. In 1850, her parents were Elizabeth Ann and James Zachariah Williams, 
who had been keen supporters of London clubs. She was tutored at home. This bitch got money! Her family is money. That's some old money-ass shit to be tutored at home in the 1850s. Okay. Okay. Um, she developed wide interest in art, science, social responsibility in London society and intelligentsia. This bitch is rich. Do you know what poor girls were passionate about in the 1850s? Working. Sewing clothing. Old money or acoustic. Yeah, I can tell she was tutored <laughs> All that tutoring. She came a flat earther. Proof that unregulated home is unreliable. Food not dying. She married Sir Walter de Soddington Blount, ninth baronet. See, this is why I couldn't be like a rich woman in the 1800s, because I would laugh. Like, I'm trying to imagine her situation and her father being like, and you shall, mar you, you shall marry Sir Walter de Soddington Blount, ninth baronet. I would laugh. I'd be like, what's that motherfucker's name? Like, Walt? Hi, nice to meet you. Like, so extra. Oh my god, I almost knocked the table over. So, they raised a family at the seat of Malloway Hall. Raising a family at the seat of a hall. I feel like I'm too poor to even read this. Where she would spend time there and at their house of London, where she was a fellow of the Royal Society of Literature and the Society of Antiquaries. So, after Samuel Rowbottom's death in 1884, she became president of the Universal Zetetic Society. That was his, like, OG thing, remember? Whose objective was the propagation of knowledge related to the natural cosmonology in confirmation of the Holy Scriptures based on practical scientific investigation. Duh! So Blount's title and money were said to have attracted an archbishop, several colonels, and a major general to the membership. So because she was rich, she got her other powerful friends to be flat earthers too. So they published a magazine, The Earth Not a Globe. They did this for a couple of years. It was edited by her. She was very much involved. She also published a novel um, titled Adrian Galileo, where the, and the Flat Earth Society, there's not a copy of this book that exists apparently, because the only review we have is from the Flat Earth Society, said it's about an aristocrat who escapes her unhappy marriage and reinvents herself as a world famous Flat Earth proponent who tours Europe giving elaborate lectures on cosmology, the creation, true love, and hell. Yeah, that's a novel, for sure. You made that up self-insert fan fiction so her and her husband wanted to provide evidence of the earth's flat surface so they created experiments on the old bedford level canal over several weeks like we talked about with her little sheet thing adding to my never to be read so we already talked a little bit about this so i'm actually going to skip over it some <clears throat> So that is just kind of about her experiment, the photographer, all that stuff, it being put in the magazines, all that jazz happened later on in her famous life. So to get to her ending here, when she was 73, she married for a second time to a builder and evangelist named Stephen Morgan, who was 40 years younger than her. And she became an active member of the Society for the Protection of Dark Races. And then she died off Hailing Island. Not off the island. Like, she died of natural causes on the island. Love the second age gap of the night. So, you might be asking yourself, what the fuck is the Society for the Protection of Dark Races? Literally, when I read that, I was like, um, what is that? Like, I've never heard of that. I'm very, very, very confused. So, the Society of the Protection of Dark Races across the equator in South Africa, it is believed by flat earthers that the indigenous South Africans are flat earthers. I don't know if that's true. I have no idea. I have no knowledge of the indigenous history of South Africa. But they created, they created a society for the protection of dark races because they were like, well, the indigenous Africans are flat earthers, so we need to protect them. Like, I'm glad you got to the place of like protecting people that look different from you, but I'm like really struggling to see how you got there. 
Like, what is going on? Literally, what is going on with these people? I told y'all that this was surprisingly petty and very interesting. That's why they need protecting. White women just say whatever they want. Um, I was throughout the years, 1927. They call me a flathead. I know the world is flat. He can prove it. He doesn't care what you think or what the newspapers say. Literally. I hate the way this website is laid out. Okay. Moving on from their literature because the internet sucks at being readable. We're going to jump ahead a few decades. So that is where we kind of end off with the origins of this movement, with the Row Bottom and Lady Elizabeth furthering the Flat Earth agenda. That's how they started getting literature. That's how they started getting a lot of things. So now we're going to jump ahead a few decades. And these are the orgs that started producing more stuff recently. So in 1956, Samuel Shenton created the International Flat Earth Research Society, better known as the Flat Earth Society. <laughs> I can't even take it seriously. Um, as a successor, which means like the thing that comes next after the Universal Zetiac Society, running as its organizing secretary from his home in Dover, England. Given his interest in alternative science and technology, the emphasis on the religious arguments was less than in the predecessor one. So the OG people were like, the Bible says the earth is flat. They like were very Jesus-y about it. These people are more science sciency and less religious so his primary aim was to teach children before they were convinced about a spherical earth gotta get them before they're convinced about the spherical earth and despite plenty of publicity the space race eroded shenton's support in britain until 1967 when he started to become famous due to the apollo program so when satellite images showed that earth was a sphere he said it's easy to show a photograph like that it's easy to uh, it's easy to see how a photograph like that could fool the untrained eye. Later asked about similar photographs taken by astronauts, he attributed curvature to the use of a wide angle lens. It's deception of the public and it isn't right. Why, I hate to see all the cults try to indoctrinate before common knowledge comes in. So as you can imagine, satellite images did a lot to destroy the flat earth movement. Really was a tough situation for them. Then in 1969, Shelton, Shenton persuaded Elias, Elias Hillman, a polytechnic of East London lecturer, to become the president of the Flat Earth Society after attempts to convince Eden Thomas, a former chairman, to take on the role. But there's little evidence of any activity on his part until after Shenton's death when he added most of Shenton's library to the archives of the science fiction foundation he helped to establish. So that's kind of boring, but this is like the politics of the early Flat Earth Society days. So Shenton dies and then a correspondent inherits the library. The Flat Earth movement kind of went through like a flop. So they flop with a little bit, then they got redone. Now they're flopping again. And over the next three decades, this is when they started to get some numbers because under his leadership, they gained or they went up to 3,500 members. So Charles K. Johnson really brought in those numbers, but aren't the photos flat? Johnson spent years examining the studies of flat and round earth theories and proposed evidence of a conspiracy against flat earth. The idea, <laughs> the idea of a spinning globe is only a conspiracy error that Moses, Columbus, and FDR all fought. What are you talking about, sir? No one has any idea what you're talking about. Not a clue. His article was published in a Science Digest magazine in 1980, and he goes on to state, if it is a sphere, the surface of a large body of water must be curved. The Johnsons have checked the surfaces of Lake Tahoe and the Salton Sea without detecting any curvature. Johnson issued many publications and handled membership applications. The most famous publication was called Flat Earth News, and it was a quarterly four-page tabloid. It's like a little magazine, like a mini magazine. 
Um, and Johnson paid for these publications through annual membership dues. It cost between six to ten dollars over the course of his leadership. And he cited the Bible for his beliefs. Um, and he saw scientists as pulling a hoax, which would replace religion with science. And the Flat Earth Society's most recently planned model is that humanity lives on a disk where the North Pole is at the center and a 150 foot wall of ice Antarctica is on the outer edge. <clears throat> I'll show it to you. Um, and in this model, the sun and the moon are each 32 miles in diameter, and the Flat Earth Society recruited members by speaking against the U.S. government and all its agencies, particularly NASA. Out of everything to hate in the U.S. government, NASA is not very high on my list at all. Um, much of society's literature in its early days focused on the, the Bible, but now they try and do more of the explanation and evidence kind of vibe. So this is what they think is going on right here. Again, for those of you on TikTok, you have to come to Twitch to see the pictures. They beef with NASA so hard. So this is what they think it looks like. There's nothing on the under part, I guess. And then the gravitational forces come from down here. Here's the sun and moon doing their thing, rotating. Um, the atmosphere is a protective dome. And then here is the 150 foot ice wall. Explore at your own risk. Our world is the dice roller in the sorry board game. Snow globe, got it. What do they think when they travel on a plane? Not Earth being a CD. No, it's actually so embarrassing. But why is only the earth flat? Why are there flat earthers at my college hanging out in like our little wooded flat earths? I want to go to the ice wall. No, like the land is flat. We just have a little curve. Well, the graphics improved at least. Someone found Canva. So obviously criticism. Um, people think that this is wrong because they are. And so according, <laughs> this kills me. According to some Flat Earthers, the Flat Earth Society is not the real Flat Earthers. No, no. That is a government-controlled organization whose true purpose is to make ridiculous claims about Flat Earth to discredit the Flat Earth movement. Of course. Of course. Of course you have infighting. Of course the real Flat Earthers know that the Flat Earth Society is fake. Flatception. Not Flat Earthers having beef with other Flat Earthers. Can y'all get along with anybody? For reals. Um, so it like we said under Carl K. Johnson, Charles K. Johnson, the membership rose to about 3,500 people under his leadership. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> but began to decline after a fire at his house in 1997, which destroyed all the records and the contacts of the society's members. A fire. Interesting. And then his wife, who helped manage the database, died shortly after, and then he died four years later. Little suspicious if you ask me. Little suspicious if you ask me. No, because I was literally thinking, I bet there's sectors of the community that beef over things like if there's anything on the bottom of DVD or <laughs> sounds like some misventure. <laughs> so then in 2004, Daniel Shenton, not related to the other Shenton guy that we talked about, quinky dink resurrected the Flat Earth Society, basing it around web-based discussion forum, and he believes that no one has provided proof that the world is not flat. This eventually led to the official relaunch of the Society in October 2009 and creation of a new website featuring a public collection of Flat Earth literature and a wiki page. Moreover, the Society began accepting new members for the first time in 2001, with musician Thomas Dolby becoming the first to join the newly reconvened convention. As of July 2017, over 500 people have become members. In 2013, part of the Society broke away to form their own web-based group. 
Because, of course, apparently Italy is particularly passionate about this. There's no centralized flat earth societies in Italy, but since the 2010s, small groups of conspiracy theorists carry out meetings and have also spread to like basically different parts of Italy and had several meetings in Palermo, Sicily with an entry price of 20 euros. Among their claims, they include that NASA is similar to Disneyland and that the astronauts are actors. An April 2019 supermassive black hole photo at the core of the supergiant elliptic elliptical galaxy Messier 87, that photo, is apparently fake. The proof the Earth lies flat is in a bottle where if placed horizontally, the water never curves. If y'all talk about small bodies of water not curving, one more time, one more time, one more time, I swear to God. They're like, look, when I put my bottle of water like this, it is flat. Checkmate. Checkmate. In addition to this is their common belief that the United States has a plan to create in Europe a new America open to everyone where the only valuable, where the only value is consumerism and that this is like a common anti-Semitic trope. So I'm not going to like go through it, but basically they have like this trope that the people are going to take over and it goes back to flat earth theory for them. Um, so their former leader of the five star movement political party, Beppe Grillo, showed interest in the group, admiring their free speech. And he was supposed to come to their conference, but he didn't come. So sorry, Italy. And then obviously the Internet made the flat earth movement really, really, really catch on. November 2017, more than 500 people paid as much as $249 each to attend the first ever flat earth conference in a suburb of Raleigh, North Carolina. And according to a 2018 YouGov opinion poll, just 66% of millennials firmly believe the earth is round. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Oh, this is the video I wanted to watch. Was this it? Yeah. I'll start with some big inside Flat Earth International Conference where everyone believes the Earth isn't round. These are questions. The sky is in a world where it feels like nothing is as it seems. I'm gonna put this on Ooh. faster. It's blue, of course. Oh, it says blue. Oh, it's blue. One plus one is... Two. 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 There's at least one truth we thought was indisputable. And the Earth is... Flat. Flat. The Earth is flat. My reality, my senses tell me that the Earth is flat and stationary. Or so I thought. But for the people attending the first Flat Earth International Conference here in Cary, North Carolina, their Earth is indisputably not round. Yeah, everybody here can agree on absolutely one thing, which is it is not a globe. For centuries, a flat Earth was accepted as certainty until science and sailboats said otherwise. And one of the rules of power is you never admit that there's someone bigger than yourself. But in 2015, this guy, Mark about? Sargent, posted his flat Earth clues. Part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around These both people the design definitely look the flat like flat earth system we live in. You're kind of the like father of this oh, movement. Brian, how, how would you? <laughs> don't do You're that. You're the one who just started it all. I did not invent flat earth. All I did was he did walk not. to a door, point at it, say, you know what? I think there's some really interesting things on the other side of this, and check it out for yourself. If Flat Earth is a university. <laughs> Why don't we run yeah. out of water if it then falls off the edge all the time? People have traveled from around, actually, Mark would say, across the flat world to attend. The first rule of Flat Club is you don't talk about Flat Club. Until now. You know, I have a Be poem so serious. about that. It's, uh... <laughs> Right Not here. a poem. Amy Nicholson wrote a book of poetry about her flat earth journey. A few months flat and seven months to rally. Kim Gurley came to the conference from Houston. I haven't really come out all the way yet. I'm still a little in the closet. <laughs> You're on ABC News, man. Lainey Inavali came from even farther. I mix with quite a lot of flat earthers in, a, in uh, New Zealand. You know flat earthers, I guarantee it. But you don't know who they are because they're afraid of talking about it. One. Two, three, we're not crazy. Like many modern movements, we're not 
Isn't that crazy? Wine has grown in large part out of the internet with rappers like Odd TV evangelizing to hundreds of thousands of subscribers. He flew from New Zealand and still makes this flat. And YouTube channels like Globebusters encouraging skepticism about what you've been taught. For the serious students here at the conference, this has gone to a point now where it's becoming real. It all comes down to proof. When it comes to science, there's things you can test right now, right? Fire burns, water's wet, drop something falls to the ground, that appears to be gravity. Those are things you can test, right? But the curving horizon, the sloping sea level, the spin of the Earth, unless you can see these phenomena with your own eyes, they <laughs> may not be true. Right. Literally how many bought tickets to this observe? This crazy, right? But think about this. For the last 20, 25 generations, this is what we've told people. Unlike what we've been told in school, some flat earthers imagine the Earth looks like a snow globe round but not sphere okay i think and that y'all pretty much get the point that is their little conference um in 2018 so let's discuss this mark Sargent guy he released a series of videos called flat earth clues which propelled the modern flat earth movement he kind of went viral and he continues to do this he alleges that all world governments have been lying about the shape of the planet and that nasa faked the apollo program as well as other um, space exploration this really just says it all um Sargent says that being single was a contributing factor to him discovering and believing flat earth conspiracy. He said, most people get married and have kids, but if you don't, you have a, you have a huge amount of free time on your hands. Very self-aware. Yep. Very self-aware. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, thanks for sharing that with us. He has been a speaker at multiple Flat Earth events, and he was interviewed for a Netflix documentary about the Flat Earth community. It's literally not on Netflix anymore. I get very angry when Netflix takes down their own content. You made it. What are you losing? Ugh. So, in a that Netflix documentary about this community, um... <clears throat> It follows a group where it says a small but growing contingent of people who firmly believe in a conspiracy to suppress the truth that the earth is flat. So it seems like some flat earthers are like, they're getting it wrong. I know the truth. And some flat earthers are like, they're lying to us. Seems like that would be quite a, a dividing factor in the flat earth community. Um, so... One of the YouTube flat earthers on YouTube is Bob Nodo, who hosts a YouTube channel entirely dedicated to the theory, and he is one of the team that relied on a $20,000 laser to prove that the earth doesn't actually rotate, except the earth does rotate. What we found is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. Now, obviously, we were taken aback by that. Wow, that's kind of a problem. We were obviously not willing to accept that, so we started looking for easy, so we started looking for easy to disprove it was actually registering the motion of the earth. You know what you say is if your experiment proves you wrong, just disregard the results. You, we don't want to blow this, you know, when you've got $20,000 in this freaking gyro. If we dumped what we found out right now, would it be bad? What if I told you it was confidential? So they bought this giant laser. It moved because the earth is rotating. And they were like, shh, stop. Just don't bring that up. Don't bring that up. So. In 2019, a group of scientists decided that. to scientifically prove that the Earth is flat. So they bought a $20,000 ring laser gyroscope, an extremely Gyro. precise tool that can be used to gauge the Earth's motion. They figured that if Earth is actually a sphere, they would see a 15 degree per hour drift on their gyroscope. And although they were very confident that this would not happen, when they turned on their device, it said 15 degrees on the dot. Now, in the words of one of the lead researchers, we obviously weren't going to accept that. They tried to use the gyroscope again in what's called a zero gauss chamber and also in a bismuth chamber to really alleviate any outside factors that could be affecting the reading. Still, however, it remained 15 degrees. But instead of accepting these results, they decided to come up with an entirely different experiment. They took these two boards and cut holes in them. Then they placed them a distance away and put a camera on one side and a light on the other. 
If the Earth is flat, the camera would see the light when they were both being held at the same height. If the Earth is round, however, the light would have to be held higher for it to be seen. We don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light way above your head. Interesting. So stupid. Literally so stupid. They're like, our $20,000 laser, $20, laser didn't work. So we're going to try cutting holes in boxes. So, a couple days let's ago, go, let's go through some celebrities and their flat earth. Doing the quote holding court with Gino Ariama <laughs> podcast. He's got more people. This is what he told Gino. When I started actually doing research on my own and, and figuring out that there is no real picture of Earth, like there's not one picture of Earth, and we haven't been back to the moon since 1961 or 1969, you start and, and, and it becomes like conspiracy theory. Just in case you weren't persuaded by Kyrie, here are some Planet recent Earth. photos of the Earth from our friends at is the Internet. Earth? I, I mean, is that Earth? Look, is that our Earth? <laughs> he's questioning whether the moon landing really existed, saying there's no real pictures of Earth. His larger point that it's worth questioning things around you is fine, but at a time in this country where we're having a... So, Kyrie Irving thinks the Earth is flat. Tila Tequila. Tila Tequila, best known for being on MySpace and a short-lived reality show, is trying desperately to hold on to her dear, dear fame. Watch out, everybody. This bitch is back. Tila took to Twitter and said f*** it to the 140-character limit and went on a four-hour rant. Now, what could have been so important that it caused Miss Tequila to harangue for so long? Let's take a look. Why are all the buildings in NYC standing straight up? If Earth was round, then some of the buildings would have a slight tilt. Hashtag flat Earth. If the Earth was a spinning globe, then how come airplanes can still land without crashing? Because the face of the Earth is flat, not a globe. I think I might be leaning over to her side a little bit. I think I accidentally started World War IV on my page, but one day you'll well, realize was I was right about the hashtag flat Earth, just like our ancestors knew. Skipping right over World War III, are we? Someone tell me why I can turn streetlights on and off with my mind. I have been able to do this since last summer. So that tweet is absolutely incredible, and I believe her. But the flat earth stuff was not true, and that was the last of her flat earth stuff. This is Millie Bobby Brown. I really have no notes for this. Millie, when you were 14 years old, you said on a TikTok <clears throat> live that you thought the earth was flat. Hmm. Unfortunately, yes, I did. Do you still believe this? <laughs> no. Tell me the truth. Although I've never seen, like, the, the, you know, you know when you're on a plane, sometimes you can see it, the curve? I've not seen that yet. You've seen satellite pictures, right? I, I have. I have, yeah. Thanks, Judd. She does not believe the Earth is round. I can see it in her eyes. She does not believe the Earth is round in the uh, slightest. B.O.B., also a popular flat earther, looks like he believes in more of like a cone Earth. He said, don't believe what I say, research what I say. A lot of people are turned off by the phrase flat Earth, but there's no way you can see all the evidence and not know. Grow up. Grow up, people. Grow up. You can still regurgitate force-fed information all day. Still doesn't change physics. Have you thought about physics? Have you thought about growing up? How did I not know so many celebrities are flat earthers? Celebrities, they're just like you and me. Um, the cities in the background are approximately 16 miles apart. Where is the curve? Please explain this. King, if you just wanted to post your mountain pick, like, you could have. That's literally fine. You could have just posted that. B.O.B. also believes most celebrities are clones. Is he? Maybe he knows something we don't. So this is Neil deGrasse Tyson um, slamming B.O.B. <laughs> if you spent any time on Twitter in the past 48 hours, then you heard about our next story. Rapper B.O.B. blowing up Twitter with his theories. Actually, this one I don't think was as interesting. I think we should move on to more people accidentally being flat earthers. So moving on to Sherry Shepard. This is a co-host of The View. If, if you, so you don't believe that 
evolution happened. Are you saying no. that, so you don't believe it's possible that God, and I'm going to make it in the way that I speak so it's fun, okay. that God sneezed and went, I got a great idea, and created a universe which then took its its mm -hmm. movement. Because I believe... From dinosaurs to birth. For all of, some, all of those things, I, I believe that God has given us a couple of markers to work from. I believe that. Mm -hmm. And so I have to believe that all of the knowledge that he's put into us to learn, he said, listen, take it and run with it. This is why I created you. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure that I can so actually... You can believe in both. So you, can, you, you can't have one without the other, mm -hmm. I don't think. But I don't she think doesn't you agree can have that. science and, let me and, just point and God. Yes, darling. Four members of the Republican Party who are running for a president also, also yes. do not believe in evolution. Yes. So if there was a gasp in the audience, it, it should be a bigger gasp. Is the world flat? Is the world flat? Yes. I don't know. What do you think? I, I never thought about it, Whoopi. I, is the world flat? I never thought about it. Have I, you I, never thought about whether never, the world was no, because I, but I'll tell you what I've thought about, how I'm going to feed my child. Well, you can, Literally me, whenever someone asks me something I don't know. I'm going to take care of my family. The world, is the world flat has never entered into, uh -huh. like, it, that has not been an what important teach, thing to me. You'll teach your son, Jeffrey, right? If my right? son, Jeffrey, asked me, is the world flat, I guess I will go. You know, and, didn't and Columbus and already work this so question out? And look it up. Because my question was, if science tells us mm -hmm. that the world is round, yeah. what's where where would you negate that well, science what, well let me get the let me get it out first <laughs> that science may say okay here she makes an excellent point which is who actually cares if it's flat we think has happened and if you put your faith in the idea that the world is round can we not also believe that part of that comes from the e is evolution as well. God gives us those kinds okay, of markers. That, you yeah. know, he okay. gives us those kinds of... <laughs> this is so fucking unserious. So in the information age and because of social media and celebrities, um, this has made it a lot easier for like-minded theories to connect with each other and mutually reinforce their beliefs. Social media has had a leveling effect that experts say have less sway in the public mind than they used to. Um... So basically the experts are saying like because of social media no one cares about us because they're just talking to each other. YouTube faced criticism because of the Flat Earth conspiracy videos in 2019 and in the documentary um, professor of psychiatry offers this as an explanation. One is the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is the phenomenon whereby ignorance in a given field makes people unable to recognize their own ignorance or lack of ability in that field. Misunderstandings of a simple observation, pseudoscientific practices which fail to separate reliable from unreliable conclusions, and a progressive divergence from reality that starts with a belief that conventional information sources and the government cannot be trusted. So a psychiatrist thinks they're crazy is basically the answer there. So I don't really like Jimmy Kimmel very much. I think he's very annoying, but he sent somebody to the flat earth conference. So y'all get the point of that flat earth conference. I just thought that had some interesting, I'm so uncomfy. I can tell, I can tell you're uncomfortable. This guy is making the flat earthers seem sane. I hate late night humor. So where am I? As Daryl Marble, speaker at a flat earth conference, told his audience, this is what he said. After watching hours of YouTube conspiracy videos on Sandy Hook, 9-11, false flags, the Bilderbergers, the Rothschilds, and the Illuminati, each thing started to make much more sense. I was already primed to receive the whole flat earth idea because we already had to come to the conclusion that we're being deceived about so many other things. So of course they would lie to us about this. So conspiracy belief is often intertwined with conservative Christian belief, according to internet influencer Rob Sikba, who I don't know who that is. The ultimate motivation of the alleged conspiracy of round earth is many of us have come to believe is hiding God. So I think they're going back the religious realm again. That's their origin. They're heading back to it. Um, so in style and substance, the flat earth movement is a close cousin of creationism. <laughs> is his name Marvel? Daryl Marvel, yeah. 
Um, they tend to not trust observations they have not made themselves and often distrust or disagree with each other. Patricia Steer admitted in the Behind the Curve that she wouldn't believe an event like the Boston Marathon bombing was real unless she had gotten her own leg blown off. Flat Earthers believe in the documentary have also professed the belief to conspiracy theories about vaccines, GMOs, chemtrails, 9-11, transgender people, and some said dinosaurs and evolution were fake and that heliocentrism is a form of sun worship. So they're, they're really getting biblical with it. Like they are going very, 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 very far back in time. Um, scientific experts pointed to confirmation bias as like the issue here because they really will only look at stuff that further confirms their own beliefs. Um, a lot of them cite the Bible as evidence like we talked about. Sorry. <sighs> so on May 3rd, 2018, Stephen Novella analyzed the modern belief in flat earth and concluded that despite most people think about the subject, the believers are being sincere in their belief that the earth is flat and they're not just saying that to wind us up. He stated, in the end, it is the core malfunction of flat earthers and the modern populist rejection of the expertise in general. It is a horrifyingly simplistic view of the world that ignores partly out of ignorance and partly out of motivated reasoning the to real complexities of our civilization. It is ultimately lazy, childish, and self-indulgent, resulting in a profound level of ignorance, drowning, drowning in motivated reasoning. So he believes one of the most telling moments of the convention was a flat earth addiction test when based on a checklist to determine whether someone is in a cult without the convention attendees realizing themselves of being in a cult. So yikes on bikes, flat earth is a cult is really, please do Mormons. Conspiracy stream would be epic. I think I might want to skip over this video because it's very, actually we can watch it. Today to We're not going to watch the whole thing. With trust in institutions at an all-time low, and the concept of objective truth seemingly harder to agree upon, conspiracy theories are flourishing. The people that are perpetrating this hoax and the people that really run this world are not going to let go of that power easily. No one has an official nomination for a trusted source of mainstream media. The mother of all conspiracies is surely the flat earth. There is no curvature on this earth. It cannot be measured. But how do you yes, know it can. on a globe? Can you prove it? I know I'm not crazy, so why should I be bothered with someone who says I'm crazy? We're not spinning round on the ball. It's not a clear cut line. Right. Does the horizon stay to your eye level? I can't remember. Do you simply trust the evidence you've been shown? Assuming such a lie would be too big. But well, I can see the curve. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can. <laughs> sure you can? Over the past few years... This feels white nationalist adjacent. I was shocked it didn't go there. Not only sharing research supporting their theories, but often incorporating conspiracies that, for many, are far more dangerous. From vaccinations to Sandy Hook. Yeah, this is kind of what we already talked about. Um, here we go. This is what I wanted. The earth is Literally what? So, we're gonna watch one more clip, but I wanted to just tell you about this story about the fucking flat earth. I think we actually are gonna watch more than one clip. Okay, yeah, I ended up adding more stuff in here. Anyway, let's talk about the flat earth society in Australia, because they recently went through it. A vicious falling out, alleged death threats, and an arson attempt. This is the story of how Australia's first flat earth conference destroyed itself from the inside out. So, the convention, just the convention flyer described it as an ocean level world record laser attempt, a repetition of the Bedford level experiments on a record breaking scale, a laser beam sent out miles across the sea to another point, a boat, probably, they have no fucking plan. So the Medfrol experiment is controversial and most commonly repeated by flat earthers like we already talked about. <clears throat> so... This never happened because the convention never actually happened. It was supposed to take place <coughs> March 17th, 2018, but it fell apart. Co-organizer Lee Maxwell Judd believes that dark negative forces were behind its failure, but that the convention was doomed from the start. So this is their flyer. Apparently B.O.B. is performing, you guys. It's a flat earth gathering. Drink is complimentary. 
9 p.m. till late. Perfect. Again, good merch ideas. Oh, and if you want merch, I'm taking it down in a couple of days. So get merch if you want merch. It'll be up for a few more days. So the previous image was my first. This is written by a journalist in the local area. Was my first introduction to a flat earth gathering, an event for Australians who believe the earth is flat. It appeared in a post on the I fucking love science Facebook page. The event looked good on paper, tragically ambitious on paper. Mark Sargent, the prominent flat earther YouTube was a guest. So was rapper B.O.B., the one who famously argued with Neil deGrasse Tyson on Twitter. Um, and the location was in Australia, like we said. So after watching a friend disappear down the rabbit hole, I'd become obsessed with flat earth culture and people involved with it. I profiled my friend John in 2016, a medical doctor who in a short period of time had gone from devil's advocate to full-fledged believer, a man who'd put friendships in his marriage at risk and favor of his resolute belief that the earth was flat. The John I knew was razor sharp, intelligent, and funny. John was successful, the kind of guy you wanted to impress and laugh at your jokes. I'm a normal person, he told me once, and I believed him. It made me wonder, are all flat earthers like my friend John, or was he the exception? Um, getting merch right now and I got paid today. I desperately want the say no to drugs, say yes to history. So it's 2018, and despite NASA photography, science, and the fact that we've landed on the moon, there are people who believe the Earth is flat, like we've said, and the 150-foot ice wall around it. So the major gatherings are increasing in frequency. Birmingham in the UK had their Flat Earth Convention. Another one was planned in Alberta, Canada. It is ironically a global movement and is increasing in scale. So I was desperate to attend the Australian Flat Earth Convention and desperate to meet these people. But in getting in contact with the organizers was challenging. I sent an email to the address on the flyer, but it bounced back multiple times. The primary contact number for a man named Tigger? Tiger? Like from, what's that thing? Pooh, Winnie the Pooh? Um, appeared to be disconnected. Another... A second number for Lee seemed like a legitimate set of digits, but rang out the first time I dialed. <clears throat> Maybe this was just an elaborate joke. I was in the passenger seat of my wife's car when Lee called back. His full name, I later learned, was Lee Maxwell Judd. Yes, Judd says the Flat Earth Convention was still going ahead. Same time, date, same place. There was a typo on the email address, and that's why my emails kept bouncing back. As for, I'm just going to call him Tiger. That's easier. As for Tiger, his co-organizer, Judd had no idea. No one had been able to get in contact him, with him for months. He disappeared off the face of the earth. Maybe he fell off the edge. Um, Judd was happy to chat and more than happy for me to attend, but mentioned that the event was being downsized, partly because Tiger was uncontactable. On March 17th, 2018, an unusually hot afternoon, even by Sydney standards. I'm standing outside Darling Park, a modern set of tower blocks with harbor views. Darling Park is modern and fancy, it's office space mainly. In the lead up to the Flat Earth Convention, I'd spoke with Maxwell, Lee Maxwell Judd a few times. He'd been careful to temper my expectations. The flyer promised a convention, but it had been scaled back. Now it was more like drinks with like-minded flat earthers. Me, anytime I try and plan a social gathering. Um, it's now Saturday morning and he's sheepish. He isn't expecting many to pe people to arrive. And in the end, he's right. Only two people showed up to the convention, three including myself. I spot Judd first. He greets me with a firm handshake. He's wiry with thick forearms. Judd says he turns 53 this year. Um... Artigasaurus is attendee number two, retired, graying, middle aged, comfortable in his own skin. He's Uruguayan. English is his second language, and he's wearing a t shirt that says Flat Earther. The three of us make small talk, and it becomes apparent that this, the three of us sitting around a small coffee table in the reception area, is the Flat Earth Convention. Judd seems restless, flicking glances at the entrance as if willing more people to show up. Sorries isn't bothered in the slightest. He's comfortable cracking jokes, sharing stories. <laughs> no, why am I sad for him? Here's them. I'm like, why am I sad? This is so awkward. I do feel bad. I feel really bad. It gets really weird, you guys. But I, right now in this moment, I'm feeling very bad. So, 
Argetus Sirius is, Sorius is lovely, Judd is friendly but intense, he talks conspiracies and devil worshippers. Why are they lying about the shape of the earth? Are they trying to hide the fact that we are of divine origin? Um, he says that we're all just water and energy connected to a supreme creator from a different dimension. The positives go there. The negatives get flicked off the circuit board. I asked Jed about the location. Why Darling Park? The reason is simple. He says it has a beautifully maintained garden with sculpture, roughly two meters in circumference. And the earth as, and the earth as seen on the United Nations flag. A flat earth. So I guess that's what they're referring to. That's why he picked it. It's because of this sign thing. Um, the reason Tiger and Judd were so set on the venue, on the weekends, Darling Park closes off access to the garden. This is a perennial frustration to Judd who suggests conspiracy. He believes the powers at B were event against his convention from the start. From day one, we've just been hitting obstacle after obstacle. I think you just don't know how to plan a convention. We're doing something in the light and the darkness. The dark negative forces are going to do everything they can to stop that. I asked Judd about Tiger, the co-organizer. What happened? Tiger says Judd is charismatic. He has his contacts. In many ways, he's driving the convention, but he fell off the grid and the Flat Earth Convention never recovered. Tiger just lost the plot. He tried to burn down a Masonic Lodge and got arrested. So according to Judd, Tiger literally tried to burn down this lodge. He doused the entrance with petrol and set it ablaze. He didn't do a very good job. Petrol burns very quickly. You have to mix oil in if you really want it to burn. After the lodge incident, Tiger went dark. I don't know what happened. I just put it down to the powers that be trying to work against us. And Judd had not been in contact with Tiger and was convinced it would be difficult to track him down. It was not. His Facebook page was relatively easy to find, so this journalist sent him a message and waited. This is why we need to be funding local journalism. I'm telling you right now, support local journalists. I couldn't find any news reports about the arson, but I knew Tiger lived in a small town in Queensland with a population of 4,000. Incredibly, that town did have a Masonic Lodge, and that lodge had its own Facebook page, and that is where he found it. The Facebook page posted, On Tuesday afternoon, the Cory Masonic Center was subject to an arson attempt. Fortunately, our building has only suffered minor damage due to the quick actions of our neighbors. I, may I express my thanks and gratitude to those men. According to a report from Wind News, police have apprehended what would be the arsonist, and he has fronted the local court. I would hope his actions were directed at the Freemason generally, rather than being directed at the Croy Lodge. We were very lucky. I don't really know what the Freemasons are and what's going on with that, so I don't know if they deserve this or not, but it seems like the Flat Earthers are really off their rocker. Um, so he is charged with one count of endangering property by fire in relation to a fire on January 16th, and I, this journalist got in contact with a representative from the lodge and said, we don't have any um, idea why he carried this out act. It would be nice to know why. Tiger's reply came in as a tsunami of messages and flat earth memes. He was happy to chat and said, I've got plenty to tell. According to Tiger, he and Judd became online friends in early 2017 after discovering the shared passion for flat earth theory. Together, they founded a flat earth group called the Ty Conian Society, and after that, they began to work on what they called Flat Earth Gathering. Tiger did most of the work organizing the venue and speaking to potential guests. Soon thereafter, the relationship became strained. They had several disagreements over how the group should be managed, and Tiger decided to cut ties with Judd. He lost what the message was all about. It seems like both of them think the other one just like really lost the message. One problem, Judd was essentially paying for flat earthing gathering. Tiger referred to him as his financial backer. With no money, Tiger canceled the booking at Darling Park and called it a day. That's when Tiger alleges Judd began sending multiple threatening messages, including death threats. In one email, he allegedly threatened to eat Tiger's children. My boyfriend is a Freemason, and to be honest, still don't know what it is. You should look it up if that's your boyfriend. You should figure it out. As someone who dated someone that was in a thing I didn't understand, you should look that up. You Look that up for you, I think. Freemasons are okay. They definitely aren't perfect. They don't allow women, but they're not bad from my experience. It's a theory that they're world order Satanist or something. See what I mean? I just can't go here. Um, Tiger says that Judd was trying to take control of his creations. First, he tried to seize ownership of the Tyconian Society, and he says now he's trying to manipulate... His latest creation, 
a crossed media concept called Flat Tube, a Facebook group that speaks directly to fellow flat earthers. Tiger says he was deeply hurt that Lee's actions left him feeling physically sick. And it's for that reason he says that he got drunk and set fire to the Mason Center in 2018. I know that this is literally just beef between two guys, but I just stumbled upon it and really, really needed to share it. Um, so he, the journalist said one of the most terrifying things about him is that many of the claims he made were true. For example, he says he worked in the movie industry for decades, but he did have an IMDB page and he was a crew member in a lot of movies shot in Australia, like Star Wars Episode 2, Moulin Rouge, Mission Impossible 2. But other things he said didn't add up. He said he was involved with the Venus Project, which was a nonprofit, um, and the Venus Project... Um, the Venus Project advocates for the complete reimagining of how cities work and Tiger told me he was working with the Fresco's widow and then when he um, the Fresco's widow Roxanne Meadows to build the first Venus Project city from scratch in Byron Bay but when he contacted Meadows they were like what the fuck are you talking about and one of his um, most outlandish claims were very diff like this man is fucking crazy is what I'm trying to say. This man is absolutely insane. He also said that Lee Maxwell Judd was an ex-biker gang and spent many years in prison and that he is truly evil. So the Star Wars movies didn't deter him from Flat Earth. So he got back in touch with Judd to discuss Tiger's allegations and Judd said he's a nutcase. Um, he said, Judd says that there was no death threats, no abusive emails, nothing, that he didn't try and steal Flat Tube and didn't threaten to post his tiger's details on the dark web he said that's why no one turned up to the event tiger poisoned people's mind he's trying to tear it all down i never threatened him with anything it's all made up but apparently judd did spend some time in prison in his early 20s um he also owns and regularly rides motorcycles but says he was never part of a gang he said tiger is a fruit he tries to destroy things i don't know if this is like homophobic in australia but just the sentence sounded odd to me um, and it says, at the time of writing, Tiger is in the process of putting together an official complaint about Judd and his allegedly threatening behavior. As for his part, Judd plans to keep his distance. He said, I'm not having anything to do with him. My wife says if I get in contact with him again, she'll divorce me. And Tiger's story is ongoing. He still believes that the Flat Earth Convention is possible and he was planning one. He said he just needs a partner. So if any of y'all want to sign up, he is accepting. So... Last thing to finish us off, rare Logan Paul W. I Logan Paul and I, I think I'm coming out of the flat earth closet. Yes, you heard that right. Controversial YouTube star Logan Paul laying it down in the trailer for his film about the flat earth movement. Do you think the earth is flat? The earth is flat. I believe the earth is flat. The earth is flat. Internet headlines declaring YouTube's baddest bad boy had finally lost it. But it was all a prank. Well, now that it's all over, do you think the Earth is flat? No, I don't think the Earth is flat. I think that's the dumbest shit I've heard in my life. <laughs> it turns out Paul's YouTube movie, Flat... <laughs> I just, we're not going to watch this whole eight-minute clip. I just really wanted to show you that he literally was like, went to the fucking Flat Earth conference and was like, yeah, guys, I believe you. And then in his documentary, he was like, no, that shit is so dumb. <laughs> They were so mad, so mad, so, so, so mad. So there are my sources for tonight. We love the Flat Earth Movement. I do not believe y'all, but love the community you've created, but not really, because you did try and burn down that place. Um, but let's go ahead and play the game. What theme do we think a Flat Earther would pick? Underwater? Space. We're going to do space. We have to do space. We have to do space. We absolutely have to do space. So, I almost just literally fucked everything up. Oh my god. Um, I'm going to put the link to join in the chat. There you go. So you go to join.nearpod.com and enter the code J-I-Y-B-Z. 
J-I-Y-B-Z. It's gonna ask you for your name. If you don't want your government name to come up, put something else. Don't put anything offensive because that's really annoying. For those of you on TikTok, thanks for joining us. I'm gonna go ahead and say good night to you. Um, yeah, I'll give everybody a second to go ahead and join the game. It is a 10 question trivia game about what we learned about tonight. The questions will come up on my screen. If you don't want to play, you can still hang out with us. I won't be mad at you. Um, and the winner just gets bragging rights. Sorry, I don't have any money. So that's all you get from me. Love you so much. I'll give people a couple more moments to join. Let me put the link in the chat again. You can do this from your phone if you want to open up a new tab and a new window, anything like that. There's unlimited ways to join. You don't have to download the app. You don't have to make an account. I don't want your email address, nothing of the sort. Oh yeah, there's 37 people here. I'll give people a couple more moments. Where'd my phone go? I wish they would make a sloth avatar for Nearpod. I wish that Nearpod would do a lot of things that they haven't done. I will not be the top winner. Not with that attitude, you won't be. Also, do you guys like my new little graphic? Now that I'm not doing merch and we already have the fancy computer, I was like, let me put something else down there. Let me put something else down there. Alrighty, I'm going to give you like 10 more seconds to join the game and then we're getting started. I'm a penguin that lives in the ice wall. Ah. I forgot to say earlier, I like that graphic a lot. Thank you. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and hit start. If you have not joined, it will let you join late, but you probably won't win. All right, I'm going to give you five, four, three, two, one. Your computer's so quiet now. I know we never hear it screaming. What did we learn about today? Also, I don't know what we're doing next week. Haven't decided yet. Sorry, I keep lying to you all. That's why I'm not even gonna decide right now because whenever I decide live, I always end up changing my mind later. So we're not even gonna do it anymore. Big Kathy, oh, that is a good one on my list. We're not doing Helen Keller. We learned about flat earthers, baby. Flat Stanley, obviously. Who was the OG? Flat Earther of Modern History. Flat Stanley Stream. Flat Stanley Stream when? We're not doing Helen Keller, stop. <laughs> it was Samuel Rowbottom. What was the name of the famous Flat Earth experiments? Thank you, I was proud of couch board. It is the Bedford experiments. Those are the ones that were done again and again and again. Oh, the fab diet stream was a good idea. It's just such a sensitive topic for people. I like don't wanna joke about it too much. What was the result of the bet over the Bedford experiments between Hamden and Wallace? What was the result over that bet? A lot of y'all are getting this one wrong. I made this a hard question. It's hard. I wasn't gonna just give you an easy answer. Hamden was imprisoned. No one killed anyone. Hamden threatened to kill Wallace. Who's Steve Irwin? That could be a good one. 
Who was the girl boss of Flat Earthers? No wife, no kids. Flat Earth in first place is hilarious. Flat or round and juicy. <laughs> She's like the most flat earther choices of them all. Rosie O'Donnell. Maybe not Steve Irwin, because he died and I don't want to be sad. He seemed like a nice guy. I don't know what I'll stream about. We'll see. It'll come to me at some point. Why is it stuck? It was C, Lady Elizabeth Ann Blount. I feel so weird because today was our first day back at school, so it feels like a Monday, but it's weird that I'm streaming and it feels like a Monday. It's just like a lot going on in my brain right now. What was the name of the more modern group? Ooh, Vanderpump is a good stream. I might do a stream about Lisa Vanderpump. She's fascinating to me. Society of Believers. I forgot I put that in there. I really hope No Wife, No Kids, Flat Earth wins because that's hilarious. Okay, Jenna Marvel stream, but she's like a pretty private person, so I like don't really know what we would talk about. According to Flat Earthers, how tall is Antarctica? No globe earth, earth, wind, and fire, death by misadventure. Y'all struggling. Y'all struggling out here. Please, let's talk about Jax. Jax Taylor stream. No wife, no kids lost. No! They're still in seventh place. I literally don't listen to numbers. I'm glad I didn't put the equations in here for y'all. What country has many flat earth groups? Maybe we will do a Jax Taylor stream. I can kind of get behind that. I was just watching the like Vanderpump Rules cast reacts of him and Brittany. Our Nearpod usernames are the best, because y'all are funny. A flat ass parking lot is in it to win it. Conspiracy against the top. I don't know why I just got so tired. I think this one was just, I think one was just so outlandish and insane I couldn't retain the info. <laughs> this was a lot, this was quite a lot. I can't decide, I don't know. What famous rapper has danced with the idea of Flat Earth? I know y'all like the pics. I always put the pic of Debbie Ryan. Jack Taylor is the devil. Which one is B.O.B.? This is for our visual learners. First place and these pictures are hilarious. Lemur Banana, you are in it to win it. Famously, Stassi is the devil. I am the devil. I just realized I've never seen B.O.B. in person. B.O.B. accidentally um, hit me one time. I was taking pictures while he was performing and he was getting up from crowd surfing and he jostled me a little bit. He said, my bad. He said, you're good. You're good, B.O.B. Hit me again. Who took the unexpected W of tonight's stream? Not David Dobrik. Jason Nash stream? Ew, I can't. I don't want to look at him. Excellent final question. Thank you. As a friend who was converted to Vanderpump Rules by a friend, you're doing the Lord's work by converting your friends to Vanderpump Rules. I'm a little upset at Flat Earthers for making Logan Paul make me laugh. Logan Paul, 
Did not see him taking a W, but it happened. Nice job in first place. We have a flat ass parking lot. Then we have Earth, Wind, and Fire, Snow Globe, Earth, no wife, no kids, flat Earth. Earth is a parking lot. Penguins guard the edge. <laughs> Becky, Lizard Breath, Plymouth Ho, Death by Misadventure, Galactic Frisbee Golf, a Waffle House parking lot, Lady Elizabeth Ann, Amanda, a Dutch Bros parking lot. I will scroll through the rest of the dark negative forces. Gluten is a flat earther. Jax Taylor, it's a lantern. Stop, y'all are so funny. Ice wall parking lot. So, thank you. Thank you for joining me. I really, really liked this stream. I'll stick around for like a couple of seconds for any memes, but I wanna eat a snack, so I'm not gonna stick around for that long. I hope you all enjoyed this. I have no idea what we will do next week. Uh, I will let you know. Check out my TikTok. I will post in my Instagram and Twitter. Honestly, I post the promos everywhere. Um, also, if you enjoy this, tell a friend about it. I've low-key been in my flop era view-wise, which is fine, but it'd be cool if more people watched. That would obviously be cool and dope for me. So if you like this, tell your friends about it. Let people know that I exist so they can watch me. We love that. 2000 year scope, 15 degree curvature. Is this the dark and negative forces? Robottom's first date when he says, Did you know I'm a chemist, physician, journalist, and soap boiler? All of us at Margaret Sargent promoting a conspiracy theory instead of finding love. No bitches. I was trying to zoom out, but it wasn't working. People are always blissfully aware of how dumb they are. My town has a flat earth guy and he drives this baby around everywhere. I see him constantly. C is level. They showed this car in the thing that he was at the conference. They showed this car in the video at the conference. Oh my God. Alrighty. This was a great, I will see you all next week. TTY.